Some people think that we can go into space by just launching everything from the Earth and going out and living on what we brought. That's patently absurd. That would be like, what if the original settlers that came to North America brought all of their food and all of their housing with them on ships? It wouldn't be able to last. You have to be able to grow your own food and live off the land of where you're going. So space mining, to a first approximation, is just learning how to live off the land in space as we settle space. And then as we do that, we will be exporting products back to the Earth. The first products that we'll be exporting back to the Earth are, is the information and energy that comes from satellites that are built in space out of space resources. But later, we'll be bringing back precious metals like platinum group metals, which are you know, often more valuable than gold. And then eventually, as manufacturing becomes fully automated with robots, we'll essentially have giant robotic factories that consume asteroids, turn them into manufactured goods, and export that all the way to the Earth. Internet in space is starting to vastly outperform internet here on the Earth. That's step one. And over the next five years or so, we'll see that a massive proliferation of that, where the number of people getting their high-speed internet from space will grow exponentially. As we have tens of thousands and then maybe 100,000 or hundreds of thousands of satellites in Earth orbit, all connecting, and as the global communication network just goes into space, because there are fundamental reasons why it's better to put comm in space than on the ground, data processing will need to move into space. Right now, today on the Earth, the biggest cost of data processing is power. But very quickly, it's actually becoming cheaper to generate power in space than on the ground, because in, up in space, you don't have to deal with weather and climate, day-night cycles, all that sort of thing. Shortly thereafter, it will be actually cost-effective to generate power in space and beam the power down to the Earth. About the time that happens, it will be more cost-effective to build the satellites and infrastructure in space out of material harvested in space rather than launched up from the Earth. That's when space mining really starts to take off in a huge way. We'll use rocket propellant harvested from the moon and the asteroids to get around cislunar space. We'll use elements that are readily abundant in asteroids that are not abundant on the moon to build some aspects of the structures. Other things will be made out of lunar materials. So there'll be a complex space economy where all this is optimized by the invisible hand of Adam Smith. A factor that cannot be ignored is the importance of real estate. Real estate will be the ultimate killer app in space. And that is sometimes people just want to have a place to live where nobody else is spying on them or intruding on their activities. Real estate was the big play that led to the settlement of North America. The pilgrims were here for freedom and to be able to live the, the way they wanted to. Initially, the real estate play will be tourism, space hotels. And then as it becomes more and more cost-effective, people start to bring their families and live permanently in space. Space mining, especially things like going after platinum group metals from asteroids, makes no sense based on the economics of 2010 or 2015. It was just too expensive to get into space, too expensive to make spacecraft, too expensive to get around in space. But the big change that's happening now is affordability. And with affordability, it makes sense. There's a huge reduction in the cost of getting into space and building space hardware that's coming. On the space hardware side, we're going from the military industrial complex building exquisite space hardware that costs upwards of a million dollars a kilogram to build. So that means that a spacecraft that weighs on the order of a thousand kilograms or so could cost on the order of a billion dollars. Two spacecraft on that order costing as much as a high-end sports car. So as costs come down, the number of business models that can make sense in space and the activities in space that can close the business prop proposition exponentiates. Three years ago, I was invited as a consultant to advise some investors on rockets. And I said, hey, within a few years, we'll be launching Falcon 9s 100 times a year. They laughed. They actually laughed. SpaceX is launching more than 100 Falcon 9s this year. And Starship is a huge leap beyond Falcon 9. And the cost for launch into space with Starship is going to collapse even more. And then Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin 
are planning to launch New Glenn for the first time within a matter of weeks. We have two heavy launch vehicles, both massively re reusable. As we get the race to the bottom in price, all kinds of new business models emerge. So the big revolution that leads to massive changes in space industrialization is low single digits of years.